Since Galileo's times, during hundreds of years, men have been using special optical devices for telescopes to explore space. The invention of telescopes gave a tremendous impulse to the development of astronomy. A plenty of discoveries would be impossible if it were not for optical telescopes. However, scientists soon faced the problem of operational limits of these devices. They needed another solution. The 20th century saw the invention of devices intended for studying electromagnetic waves emitted by extraterrestrial objects in the radio frequency band rather than in the visible band. The key components of a radio telescope include an antenna or an antenna system and a radio meter. The radio astronomy studies radio signals emitted by objects within quite a large wavelength range from one tenth of a millimeter to a kilometer. That is why radio telescopes have antenna of different types to fit different bands. Technically, antenna receiving shorter waves do not substantially differ from regular satellite TV dishes, though they are much more bigger. However, in fact, they also comprise a paraboloid and a feed where the radio frequency emission is focused. Then energy goes to radio meter. After being amplified and digitized, it is ready for processing and analysis. Information received suggests that object's position, its structure, spectrum, and radio frequency emission intensity. You can't see the whole object with a radio telescope. It receives data on radio emission energy in a certain point, but if you measure such energy in multiple points, you can outline a general picture. It is obvious that such data represented graphically are absolutely different from visual images created by optical telescopes. However, scientifically, they provide nothing less data than optical telescopes. The key radio telescope parameters include resolution, or put it simply, the ability to show adjacent objects separately and sensitively that sets the weaker energy sources that can be recorded. Also, there is a special type of radio telescopes or radio interferometers. These are systems comprising a number of couple antenna. Signals from antenna interfere either in hardware by directing the signal to a common mixer or using computers. Then goes the analysis of information to build a general observation picture using the so-called aperture synthesis method. Radio interferometers generally have antenna of small diameter, while the performance of the whole system also depends on the span between individual antenna. Radio telescopes fall under reflectors and refractors by their aperture filling and microwave field phasing techniques. Telescopes that have holes in aperture bigger than the wavelength are called non-filled aperture antenna. They include also radio interferometers and offer high resolution. As already mentioned, the aperture synthesis takes place to get a picture. The aperture synthesis falls under two types, i.e. successive synthesis and parallel synthesis, which is more advanced. It allows simultaneously analyzing data received by a number of antenna. Optical telescopes are usually installed at uplands, somewhere in the mountains, where the air column produces lesser effect, while radio telescopes have to be assembled at bottomlands, far from cities, to minimize electromagnetic noise. Obviously, radio telescopes are costly, tremendous, and impressive systems. Sometimes a natural local terrain should serve as a mirror for a telescope. In such a case, the receiver is suspended over the mirror using special supports. Radio telescopes enjoy wide application. You can find them in Russia, Italy, Ukraine, and many other countries. They provide astronomers with essential information. In addition to optical and radio telescopes, other types are also available designed for other wavelength ranges, for instance, X-ray and gamma radiation telescopes.